What's going on? It's Javan Johnson here. You watch episode number 137 of about 10 minutes. How you feeling? How you doing? Guess what? I got like four Girl Scout cookies left in this box. Four them is left. Anybody want one? And the Girl Scouts, man, the Girl Scouts don't be playing. They will post up in like a grocery store entrance. It's like when you walking in, you know, so you can see them when you walking in and you can see them when you walking out as well. So anyhow, in my blog entry this past Tuesday, I was talking about living a lifestyle of praise. And so I want to talk a little bit more about that because praise is so important to us. You know, as Christians, it's important for us to praise God. It's important for us to be genuine in our praise to God. And so that really starts, you know, with our relationship with him. It's important to have that genuine relationship and to, to spend time praising him out of love, not just because we want something, because we like want God to do something or not just within a church service. I mean, it's, it's good to praise God in church, but that's not the only time we should praise him. You know, when we look at our lives. It's important for us, you know, to really monitor, OK, what's our motives? You know, what's my motive for doing this? And if a person is having trouble focusing, maybe they're saying, well, it's hard for me to praise God because of the certain circumstances they're in right now. Things may not be going the way that they want them to go, but it's important for us not to get caught up in our feelings the way we feel, but to praise God for who he is. To praise God because he's awesome, he's worthy to be praised, out of genuine love for him, we should have a desire to praise him. And so if we don't have that desire to praise him, it's important for us to take a look at our lives and to look at what can be some things that's blocking us from praising him. One of the things is if we're ungrateful, if we're not thankful, we can start looking at circumstances, at problems, things like that. We can start focusing on that instead of putting our focus on Jesus Christ and how awesome he is. We put our focus on Jesus Christ, it can help, it can help put things in the proper perspective. So when you think about Jesus Christ laying down his life for us, the pain that he endured, all the things that he went through for us, that love that he has for us, it, it should motivate us to love him. It should motivate us to praise him. How about we take some time right now to shout and praise the Lord? And different people may take different approaches. I mean, and for some people, it may be certain music that you like to put on to help set the atmosphere. That may get you going. You may put on some instrumentals and praise God and start to rehearse past victories and start to talk about how awesome God is, you know, to, to tell him how much you love him. Sometimes a person can be so focused on what they don't have that they can lose sight of what they do have. So it's important for us to live a lifestyle of praise, for us to be thankful and for that to carry over in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, when we wake up in the morning, we should be thanking God. You know, we going about our day, we should be thanking God. There's so many things that we can take for granted if we're not careful. And so that even kind of ties into something else I want to talk about is, is the appetite that we have. You know, our appetite, and I'm talking about it not so much from the natural side of things, but from a spiritual side of things. What do we like taking in? Because the things that we like taking in, the things that we watch, that can be a reflection of where our heart really is. So if a person is indulging into the lust of the flesh, if they're watching things that's not glorifying God, if they're listening to things that's not glorifying God, then that really can give some insight on where their heart is. And so at that point in time, the thing to do is to really get before God and to repent. If you've ever done a fast, like for instance, sometimes a person may abstain from certain types of foods for maybe like, for instance, a 21 day period. Maybe they say, okay, I'm not going to eat any junk food. I'm not going to eat this or that. You know, they may abstain from it for a while and then they come back to it and their body responds a certain way. You know, they, they may feel like, oh, I, I don't, I don't like the way I feel after I eat this. And it's like after they, after they stopped eating it and came back to it, they really could see a difference. And the same thing can happen with a person if they step away from certain things that they're watching or listening to and really spend time in the Word and really spend time doing edifying things. And then if they go back to that other stuff, then they can see like, oh, that was really affecting me in a negative way. So I think it's important for us to really see God and pray and ask him to really reveal to us in our lives the things that we need to remove from our lives and to renew our mind with the word of God. We renew our mind with the word of God. It can help us to stay focused. It can help us to change our appetite because sometimes, you know, the flesh may rise up and be like, oh, but I want this or I want that or, you know, other people are doing this. So for anybody who's ever fasted before, sometimes, you know, if you're on that fast, like that may be the time where people come around you with the food you're not supposed to have. You may be doing like a, like, like a straight up three day fast where you're not having nothing but water. You know, that may be the day where everybody want to buy you free food. So it's important for us to realize that, you know, we are going to have to make some decisions and sometimes things may not always be easy, but God is there to help us to overcome, you know, the things that we need to overcome. So we have to rely upon him and it's about relationship. When you had that relationship on a consistent basis and we had that true relationship with Jesus Christ on a consistent basis, it really helps to put things in the right perspective. It helps us to have that joy. So if somebody's having a hard time focusing or a hard time praising God, it's important for that person to really take a look at their life and really say, okay, what could be blocking me from this? What could be causing me to do this? It's because the thing about it is, and I want to make sure I clarify one thing, it's not about being perfect in the sense of that we're, that we're never going to make mistakes, that we're always going to do things the right way, but it's about giving forth our best effort. And you can look at it like this. If somebody's taking a test at school, you, you can have a person who can really try hard. I mean, they, they can study, they can take notes, 
They go to the teacher's office hour. They may go to tutor and they may go do all these different types of things. And they really work hard. They prepare. You know, they get good rest for the test. And they go in and take the test. And they may still not get a perfect score on the test. But if they gave their very best effort, they can at least take comfort in the fact that they did their very best. Versus another scenario where a person goes in maybe like two hours before the test, does some quick studying, and then doesn't get the grade they want. And then they say, well, hey, nobody's perfect. And, and yeah, nobody's perfect, but there's clearly a difference between the two situations. In fact, along the way, if God shows us, like, you could have did a better job in that area, and then it's important for us to improve, but not to just throw in the towel and say, well, you know, I mean, hey, it is what it is. God, so what it is you going through? Remember to give God the praise. Remember to continue to strengthen that relationship with Him, and then to desire and that really have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know, it's important for us to really yield ourselves to God, to yield our desires to Him, to yield the things we want to do, and just to say, okay, God, whatever it is you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do, regardless of how I feel right now. Because sometimes you may have to do stuff that you don't feel like doing. You know, sometimes you may not feel like getting up and going to work. You may not feel like doing certain things, but it's a part of the process. It's a part of being responsible. So it's important for us, you know, to really take the right approach and to do what God has called us to do. So I want to thank you for watching episode number 137 of About 10 Minutes. Have a blessed week.